Hi everyone, welcome back to the next diecast. In today's video, I'll be showing you and reviewing the 2018 scale 1948 Ford ice cream truck made by Yatming Road Signatures. This is a pretty interesting model from Yatming. I believe it's no longer being um, produced, but you can still find these on eBay. For usually between $30 and $65, maybe $70, depending on which livery you get. This is the Howard Johnson's version that you see here. Um, I think they also made the Good Humor version, I think one other version too. But these are, these are relatively uncommon to find in terms of models, and I guess the pricing is a little bit higher than you would expect for um, a, a Yatming model, but I guess it will be kind of what you would expect to see for a discontinued model. In the case of this, it is no longer being made. But um, these existed. These were actually used as ice cream trucks in the 1940s. This is based off the Ford F1 um, pickup truck body. Um, I actually did see online, Barrett Jackson recently had an auction listing for, I think it was a 1949 Ford ice cream truck. It was a good humor um, truck. I think that one, though, instead of the aqua fenders you see here, it was like brown. But um, it's still pretty cool that they actually did um, use these um, in real life. Not sure if there was like a Chevrolet counterpart um, that they used that as an ice cream truck or not, but... I think it's cool that Yatming actually made a model of this kind of, um, at the time, iconic looking ice cream truck. So again, this does have the Howard Johnson's um, livery, I guess you should say, on it. This was an actual restaurant and um, ice cream chain back in the day. I believe they shuttered maybe in the 1960s. I'm not really too sure exactly, but I think they do a nice overall job with you know all the different logos and just the tampos all, all throughout the truck. No stickers at all. You have kind of like, these would be the awnings if this were the a real um, truck, and these would kind of pull out um, like so. This is this is actually uh, my dad's model. I'm not sure how much he actually paid for it, but he bought it, I think, around 2003 or 2004, back when it was still being made. But I think overall the details of the model and everything align well with other um, Yatming models. So we'll go ahead and get into the details. We'll start up here at the front. They do a great job of capturing the front end look of this truck. The Ford F1 had kind of an interesting design going on in the front where the headlights and grille housing were kind of small and then the fenders just looked massive around them. But I think that's actually a pretty cool um, touch. And Yatmig does a great job with the overall shape and look of both the headlights and the grill. You can see with the grill, it's actually a totally see-through grill and you can see the radiator back there, which is very cool to see. Nice looking lights, they're done with kind of nice rounded textured lenses. And then you do have this Ford inscription up here too. Which, um, which is a nice touch. I'm not sure if it should be body colored though, but at least Yat Mangum has it on there to begin with. Nice kind of chrome accents on this hood here. They say Ford on them. Nice touch. Then you have these two front um, louvers here too. On the side, nice basic looking wheels. They just say Ford in, in the centers and they are black walls because this would kind of be based off, I guess, a base spec um, Ford pickup where you wouldn't have white walls. You would just have the regular black walls and just kind of the white um, centers there. But you do have actually full steering on this truck, and really good steering, too. No suspension, though, but Yatming doesn't include suspension on their model, so that's not a, a big deal. Paint quality overall is excellent. The aqua and white are not, like, metallic finish, but they do look pretty good. There is some paint transfer onto the white a little bit here and there, but this is from the early 2000s. Yatming wasn't really doing its best work at that time in terms of paint quality, so I don't think that's a big deal. And again, all the Howard Johnson tampos, any tampo you see on this is um, painted on and is very well um, applied, I, I should say. So that's always nice to see that. And further down the side, you have the nice wide fenders, nice sturdy mirrors too, maybe a little bit too small and thin, but they are painted in black, which is a cool touch. The metal framed uh, windshield, which is nice to see. Weird looking wiper, this should definitely be larger, but Yatming really doesn't do a good job with their wipers usually, which is kind of odd, I think. <laughs> And then you have um, like a light housing up here done in um, kind of a chrome plastic piece. And you have nice uh, running boards along here too. I don't think you get doors on this thing. You just kind of climb in. As you can see on this side here, um, the driver just kind of climbs right in there, completely opened up. So you wouldn't be able to drive this in, in the rain or anything like that. <laughs> of course, with modern um, ice cream trucks, which are becoming kind of less common, at least here in the States, you see, you know, Ford... E-series vans or Ford um, Transit vans, but this is what you had back in the day for these um, ice cream trucks. They have just a modified small um, pickup truck, which I think is a is a very cool. But that's pretty much it for the side and everything. In the back here, there's no tail lights, which I find kind of odd. You'd think they would have tail lights on here somewhere, but maybe they don't. Um, I'm not too sure, but there's none back here. I would assume on the real truck you would see those somewhere. 
I don't know, just kind of odd, but um, you do have a nice detailing with these kind of uh, doors that you see on the side where the ice cream guy would open them up and, you know, take out treats and all that stuff. They don't open, though, which is kind of strange. Um, I, w I wish they did. That would be a really cool touch. But um, it looks like they do. They have convincing-looking plastic hinges and stuff and this kind of latch, but they don't actually um, open at all, which is kind of a disappointment, but at least they put in the molds, I guess, for the doors. And you have kind of a nice rivet pattern going along all these different perimeters here, like up top here and everything. And kind of a smooth, like, matte plastic finish on this roof, which is a cool touch. You have a license plate back here. Cheap-looking um, um, exhaust pipe, though. Yatming yeah, doesn't always do a good job with those, but you can't really see it that well anyway, so I don't think that's a big deal. Well, now, with opening features, the only thing that opens is actually the hood here, because you don't have doors, and they don't have these doors open, so this is all you get pretty much for an opening feature, unfortunately. But the engine is uh, pretty well detailed, as you would expect for a uh, Yatming yeah, model. You have the radiator right here, and you have the main block kind of done in multiple plastic um, components. Even a couple of uh, wires back there, too, which is nice to, to say. And yeah, I'm sure there's some missing hoses and, and wires in here, but I think for a budget model engine, Yatming yeah, does, I think, an overall um, good job. And you have what looks like the battery back there, which is a cool touch. I guess you could always just add more coloring um, on your own um, if you were so inclined. But you can see all the way down to the bottom of the truck. And of course, it is a multi-piece um, engine, which, which is always nice to say. It's kind of cool to uh, put the model up on the shelf like this with, with the uh, with the hood open. You can see all the engine detailing from even a far distance, which is cool to say. So I think they did an overall good job. Under spray on, on underneath the hood, but I would think on the real truck you would see that too. Go ahead and close that up. That's really all you get for opening features. Again, you wouldn't have a door or anything on the side and whatnot, but um. Because this is a completely opened up vehicle, you can see inside the interior uh, very well. They do a great job, I think, in here for the most part. You have kind of a nice like metal floor pattern on here. It's actually not metal, it's made of plastic on the model, but you would see this um, same kind of texturing or flooring on the uh, real truck, which is cool to say. And you do have a single seat in here, well detailed overall, has kind of a nice um, texture to it. It's done in um, black, it doesn't fold or move or um, anything like that. Almost looks like it's too small, but um, I assume it's small to just accommodate, you know, one person. And then, I don't know if someone else would be standing in here or what, but interesting, very basic kind of uh, interior setup, I would say. <laughs> you do have decent detailing in the center stack and the uh, dashboard here. You have kind of a nice pattern on the dashboard. It is white to match the exterior of the truck. And then you have kind of this center, like, radio here, too, and it looks like maybe a vent um, below that. But there are some molded in buttons they are just kind of hard to see or hard to um they're not like labeled or anything like you can see them quite well and i, th I think they are the right o overall shape and size they just aren't labeled the atmin usually does not do that so i don't think that that's a big deal that that's um, absent nice looking steering wheel too kind of an odd sort of louvered pattern on these spokes here and of course you do you can steer the wheels with the steering wheel yeah i'll demonstrate like right here Kind of hard to do that, though. It's a little bit flimsy, so just be careful with that. And you have this massive um, brake here, too. Kind of loose, though. Just keep that in mind. Just be careful with, with it. And you actually do have two pedals down there as well. Um, and they are separately cast plastic pieces, which is nice to us say. Sometimes with the, sometimes Yatming would just kind of mold their pedals into the floor of, of their models, and it just wouldn't look right. But on here, they actually go to the trouble of making these pedals as separately cast plastic pieces. And they're black, too. They aren't just painted silver to match the floor. So they stand out a little bit, which, which is nice. And you do have kind of a, kind of a plastic panel on this side of the uh, in interior. It's kind of the same plastic you see on this dashboard here. Um, but yeah, aside from that, there really is not too much to uh, show off or talk about in this interior. And it will be kind of basic on the uh, real um, ice cream truck, too. It'd be a shame that nothing back here opens up or anything. Would have been cool if they at least had these um, opening, you know, doors on there. Or if you could pull out, like, the sun visors, or not sun visors, the awnings, I should say. <laughs> um, and I thought you could, because they're separately cast plastic pieces, and they have a very big gap. I thought maybe you could pull them out, but nope. <laughs> Again, this is a budget model, so some stuff, so some details are not going to be there, um, unfortunately. But I, I think it's cool that this is probably the only, or one of few ice cream trucks you can actually get in 118 scale, if not the only one. 
So it is kind of cool to, you know, be able to have this or cool for my dad to be able to have it. Um, underneath, not a whole lot to say. You do have a spare tire back here. It's actually a separate full tire. Um, and it does match up with these other wheels that you see here. So there's actually a full rubber tire around the uh, white wheel there, and it's held on by this kind of plastic brace. And you can see some of the exhaust components down here. They're done in kind of a silver. And you can see all the engine detailing underneath there too, which, which I think is a cool touch. And then here's the steering system kind of working, um, visible, visible from the um, undercarriage. Now, these steering systems that Yatming makes are kind of prone to you know, bending or breaking because they're just exposed. They're not, like, nothing covers them. I believe on the real vehicles that Yatming models, this would be kind of an exposed portion. So just keep that in mind and just be careful with it. The wheels are kind of wobbly, but very slightly so compared to those two uh, Thunderbirds that I have by them. So I wouldn't call that, like, a, like a build quality defect. I don't think it's a big deal that they're wobbly. So oh, overall... I think this is a pretty interesting model from Yatming, and if you collect, you know, cars and trucks from the 1940s or 50s, I think this is a really interesting addition to your collection. Um, and if you're into ice cream trucks, this is a must-have, I would say, for for sure. <laughs> um, a shame they're not making this anymore, and I would have liked to see maybe some more opening parts. I mean, you can't really expect much for the interior because there isn't even any doors, but you'd think at least for these, like, little freezer doors, they would open up or something. But again, this this is a budget model. Um, it, so I, I would say if you can find one for a good price, I'm definitely get it. It's kind of an interesting piece to add to your 118 scale collection. And this is actually true 118 scale. I forgot to mention that. When this is put next to the other trucks we have here in the house that are 118 scale, it matches up well. So Yatme did not underscale this or anything. If this had been made by like Barago or like Motormax, it would likely be on underscale. But in the case of this one, it is true 118 scale, which is nice to, to say. So yeah, if you can find one for a good price, I would say definitely get it. It's a very um, unique model, and it looks good with any collection of um, classic cars and trucks. As always, feel free to comment down below with your thoughts on the video or on this ice cream truck here. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.